two Buddhists, Buddha Lama and Bimba Lama, discovered a miracle buried under the ground. Today it can be found in the major Buddhist temple of Russia, Ivalgensky Datsan. Different people see him in different ways. Some think that he is looking at them. To me, it seemed that his eyes were half open. I saw nothing supernatural, no open eyes or anything of the kind. In 95% of cases, it is closed off. But today a Mongolian delegation is arriving. So I think they will open it for them. Few ever get to glimpse the miracle. The Datsan is difficult to reach. It takes four days to get here from Moscow by train alone. And even then, not everyone is allowed to get close to it. This is the Republic of Buryatia, the heart of Russian Buddhism. Lots of people come here for service, up to a thousand, so there are long queues here. Yes, very long queues. It's very stuffy inside the temple, and one can even see sweat on his forehead. Anatoly and Anton are in their fourth year at the Buddhist University of Ivalginsky Datsan. They are halfway through their course. After eight years of intense study, both will receive a degree in philosophy and the title Lama. The phrase Russian Buddhism may sound strange, but it has been one of the traditional religions of the country since the 18th century. Here, Datsans have been considered a font of wisdom. In days gone by, Buryatia's youth studied Buddhist philosophy, medicine and astrology. The university where Anton and Anatoly study works in accordance with the same traditions of centuries past. Their main goal through studying is to achieve enlightenment, thereby escaping the wheel of existence and to reach nirvana. Even though the Republic of Buryatia is part of Russia, it is a world of its own. Local traditions differ from those typical of the western parts of Russia. When it comes to religion, the difference is striking. Anton and Anatoly are almost aliens here where there are no more than 10 people like them. Twenty-four-year-old Anatoly came here from the Caucasus. No Buddhism can be found there, only Christianity and Islam. Anatoly was not a religious person initially. He studied music for eight years, playing the drums. And once he graduated from a faculty of philology, Anatoly came here just to look at the miracle of Ivalginsky Datsan. I wondered what the meaning of life was. For me, the time to find the answer to this question had come. So I traced the chain. A person is born, then he grows up, studies, gets a job, starts a family, buys a car and a house, grows old and then dies. It all seemed somewhat pointless to me. I thought, that's not quite what I want. I wanted something more. Students start their day at 6.30 in the morning with prayers, followed by breakfast. Once fed, they have classes just like at an ordinary university. Then comes lunch, free time, supper, and afterwards they resume studies. This is a lesson in the old Mongolian language. It's the most difficult of the studied languages, as it's all but extinct. However, one needs to learn old Mongolian to read ancient Buddhist texts. Students sit on the floor because they're not supposed to be at the same height as the teacher. Subordination is as important here as in the army. During class, not a single word is uttered. There are four departments at the Buddhist university, philosophy, medicine, religion, and art. Its graduates boast the reputation for brilliant doctors, astrologers, and psychics. As a result, many ordinary secular visitors come to the Datsan. The Lamas have huge waiting lists of people hoping for a miracle. Here at Evalginsky Datsan, 
one of the wonders of the Buddhist world can be found. In 1927, the Lama named Dashi Dorja Itigilov passed away, or so it was thought. Before his death, he prophesied that he would return. In 2002, his grave was opened to reveal something quite extraordinary. His body had not decayed. Itigilov was placed in a separate temple at Ivelginsky Datsan. Local residents are not allowed to look at him except on eight special worship days each year. Tourists are not allowed here either. We only let inside those who come on official business as well as our superiors. A replica of Itigilov's body can be found near the temple, which everyone can worship. As for the immortal body, three monks keep watch over him. Bimba Lama is its chief guardian. He holds the keys to the temple on his belt. A little boy lived here in the mid-19th century. He was five years old and an orphan. As a rule, the Buryats do not have orphans. If something happens to a child's parents, his relatives adopt him immediately. The boy was a shepherd, but he told everyone that he would become a Lama. No one took him seriously, until the moment he arrived on a bull holding a staff with a skull. After that, the people stopped mocking him. A few years later, he became a student at the Datsan. That little boy became known as Dashi Dorja Itigilov Lama. During the Russian-Japanese War, Itigilov strengthened the morale of the soldiers and gathered funds for the hospitals. During World War I, he organized a charity foundation to help the front. Itigilov received state awards for his efforts. Eventually, people started spreading legends about him. It used to be said that he could gallop a horse across water. The spring close to Itigilov's home is also believed to have miraculous properties. Today, people flock here with canisters to take water away with them. According to Buddhist tradition, only men are permitted to do it. This is the house where Itigilov meditated. It has now been renovated, but before that, it was just an ordinary small house, in the Buryat style. In this house, Itigilov lived as a hermit. For the last 10 years of his life, he meditated here. One day, he gathered the lamas close to him and asked them to say a farewell prayer. The lamas refused. How could they say that to somebody who was still alive? Then, Itigilov began saying it himself and literally came to a dead stop when the prayer ended. In that condition, he was placed in a wooden box and buried. But before leaving this world, Itigilov had said that he would return. The Datsan, where Itigilov served, was destroyed by Soviet authorities. A palace of culture was built there instead. But one day, it was destroyed by fire. The place had rejected the new culture. 75 years after Itigilov's death, Anatoly and Anton follow the path of the two lamas, Buddha and Bimba. Back then, the two men were looking for Itigilov's final resting place. They did not have an exact location. Instead, they relied on intuition. And against all odds, they found it. When we opened the box, we could smell the divine fragrances, a strong smell of juniper. It was so wonderful, so good. His head was clearly outlined. The skin on his head was normal. This unique footage was momentous for the entire Buddhist world. Everybody present expected to see a human skeleton. It's the only video of Itigilov's body. Now, filming him is forbidden. I did the right thing, refusing to be there when it was exhumed. You see, when those people saw his body, they were shocked. Dr. Alexei Azeev has been watching over Itigilov's body for 10 years. There is no vacuum there, so the body is supposed to decay but the immune system somehow maintains the balance. I check the body less frequently now. There are no changes whatsoever, so there's no need to fuss over it. After all the tests were carried out, we realized that the science was at a dead end. 
The scientists took samples of hair and nails. Everything suggested that Itigielov was a living person. To understand this phenomenon, an autopsy is required, but we can't, as the body is sacred. In January 2005, the head of Russia's Buddhists banned any medical examination of Itigelov's body. One explanation is that he is in a very deep meditation. He consciously immersed himself into a state where all the processes in the body run at a tremendously slow pace. So for him, seconds go by, where for us, years, long years pass. For us, 75 years have passed, and for him it may seem like 75 minutes, or even less. Several years ago, Anatoly saw the miracle with his own eyes. He became interested in Buddhism and stayed here. Anatoly worked in the Datsan's boiler house for six months. The job was hard, but his desire to study Buddhism was stronger. Imagine having the gift of clairvoyance. That means you can remember all your past lives. You acquire supernatural powers. Six months later, Anatoly entered the university together with 60 other students. And after four years, only 20 of them were left. Student life here is not unlike an extreme survival course, especially for those who used to live in the city. They have to build their own homes. There's no central heating, only a wood-burning furnace. Plumbing is non-existent. The interior is closer to that of a field barracks. Yet, those immersed in their studies do not notice such trivial things. Here, it's known as overcoming the desires of regular life. I have not overcome anything yet. For example, it's very unhealthy to eat before going to bed, but I still want to eat something in the evening. I also wrestle with the craving to sleep. It is my favorite attachment. For example, we're given Tibetan texts that we should learn by heart during the day. Every time we have to learn several pages. When you learn them, you end up in a trance and fall asleep. And it's very difficult to overcome. But the hardest thing of all is to suppress your ego. Before starting his new life, Anatoly studied music for eight years. He used to play drums for a band before he came to the Datsan. Sometimes Anatoly misses his instrument. He shows pictures of his bandmates posted on the internet. This is a friend of mine. We studied at the music school together. This website is old. It was created before I joined the band. Anatoly failed to find any references to himself on the web. His previous life is over. Yet there are still drums in his life, although they play to quite a different tune now. A Buddhist monk's education takes place not just at the university, but in everyday life too. Several students share one house, and it's required that one lama lives together with them. Anton knows how his friends live in the city. He looks at their cars, apartments, and new TV sets as if they were nothing but pieces of metal. Yet, out of courtesy, he joins the conversations about horsepower or the resolution of screens and pixels. What is the goal in life? Well, you have to study, find a job, settle down. And then no one tells you what to do next. For a broad-minded person like me, such tasks seem to be too small. Could it possibly be that man was created just for that? Could man have come into this world just for the sake of material possessions? That's not my goal. Why not? Because I think differently. Student 
students rarely have to leave the Datsan to go to the city. It's only when teachers instruct them to do so. Today, they have to take translations of Tibetan texts to the printing office and to buy a few things needed for the Datsan. Students usually change their clothes when visiting the city. There are a few Europeans here at the Datsan, both students and lamas. One can show an interest in Buddhism, but going to a Datsan and learning are two completely different things, all the more so by local standards. To them, we Europeans with our Slavic appearance may look like a mockery of their values. Anyway, we've arrived. So, do you know where to go? It should be over there. You go first, I'll follow. The task given by the Lamas takes no longer than five minutes. It took the students longer to get to the printing office. To minimize urban temptations that may lead them astray, the teachers came up with a trick. They shifted their students' weekends to Monday and Tuesday, so that they'd have fewer opportunities to meet with their friends from their previous lives. The chief problem for the students is temptation. Visiting a cinema just once would tarnish their conscience. Meeting with a friend is the same. As for the girls, they're referred to as Mara, an evil spirit who tempts. On one occasion, a man left the Datsan because he could not stand breaking up with his girlfriend. In such cases, it's said that Mara took him away. Students themselves try to spend as little time in the city as possible. When they reach their fourth year at the Datsan, they become totally estranged from civilization. Another trip to the city becomes a burden for them. You spend a lot of energy when traveling to the city. At the Datsan, you find yourself at a closed campus with no cars rushing back and forth and no people. But when you arrive here in the city, you feel as you have come out of the woods. In the city, life is stressful. At the Datsan, it's very peaceful. The very environment makes your mind calm. But here things are quite the opposite. The environment causes anxiety. Debate is the most important part of learning. It consists of philosophical arguments in the Tibetan language. Students don't just wave their hands, they throw questions at each other. This form of conversation has not changed in millennia. Anton explains that debate is logic training. Only concrete questions are asked. Those answers lead to the next question. The greater part of their free time between morning and evening classes is spent preparing for debate. At the moment, Anton is busy with another topic for discussion. One question that would be debated is, can the consciousness of a person with nihilistic views recognize a logical argument? Anton is 24. He used to live not far from Moscow in the city of Tula. Anton studied physics at university, but in his second year, he quit to come here. Anton has an elder brother and a sister. In Russian folk tales, the youngest son is always a fool. I am the youngest child in my family. What is the attitude to the youngest one? Everybody considers you to be silly. They think you're just a little boy. I'm always told, okay, that's enough. It's time for you to come back home. But life is good here. They ask me what I am going to do after life in the Datsan. They say they are worried about my social status. And I say that I do not care much about it. Though sometimes I do think about what I'm going to do next. 
Logic and doubt are two fundamental principles of Buddhism. Anton says that it's just like in physics. The only difference is that while physics studies matter, Buddhism examines the spirit. Anton believes that a physicist can easily become a Buddhist. Anton is to become a philosopher. The congregation is more used to the term of wise old man, to whom they can come for advice. There are no fixed prices for Lama's services. Physicists give as much as they see fit. There have even been cases when a Lama was presented with a car for good advice. I am not going to become a Lama or live the life of local Lamas, no. That's not going to happen, that's for sure. I cannot imagine such a way of life. I can't imagine becoming the head of a temple. Should I be the one calling people to come here to pray? Should that be the case? I don't think so. The everlasting body is not the only miracle connected with Itigelov Lama. He entered this mysterious state at a time when Buddhism was virtually destroyed in Russia. His miraculous return sped the revival of Buddhist culture. Datsans appeared in Buryatya again. Now young people like Anton and Anatoly have a chance to choose a new path in life. I could have made up a fascinating story about a life full of suffering and unrequited love. And all that eventually brought me here to try and reach the spiritual state of Buddha. I could have told you that I would be helping everyone, that I would be reading mantras for the sake of all living creatures. But things are not that simple. Honestly, I do not know myself what is going to happen to me. Anton does not yet know what the future holds in store for him, but he is certain that he will continue his education. He may leave the Datsan and go to India to study Buddhism there. The thing is that an ordinary person believes that he is living his only life right now. So mistakes seem really scary. But what if this is not the case? Mandala is a geometric model of the universe, a sacred image. Music and songs accompany the construction ritual. The monks spend hours working on the colored canvas, only to destroy it later, as any model of the universe is, in Buddhist terms, questionable. They are halfway through their course. After eight years of intense study, both will receive a degree in philosophy and the title Lama. The phrase Russian Buddhism may sound strange, but it has been one of the traditional religions of the country since the 18th century. Here, Datsans have been considered a font of wisdom. In days gone by, Buryatya's youth studied Buddhist philosophy, medicine and astrology. The university where Anton and Anatoly study works in accordance with the same traditions of Sench the Caucasus. No Buddhism can be found there, only Christianity and Islam. Anatoly was not a religious person initially. He studied music for eight years playing the drums. And once he graduated from a faculty of philology, Anatoly came here just to look at the miracle of Ivalginsky Datsan. I wondered what the meaning of life was. 
For me, the time to find the answer to this question had come, so I traced the chain. A person is born, then he grows up, studies, gets a job, starts a family, buys a car in the house, grows old and then dies. Glimpse the miracle. The Datsan is difficult to reach. It takes four days to get here from Moscow by train alone. And even then, not everyone is allowed to get close to it. This is the Republic of Buryatia, the heart of Russian Buddhism. Lots of people come here for service, up to a thousand, so there are long queues here. Yes, very long queues. It's very stuffy inside the temple, and one can even see sweat on his forehead. Anatoly and Anton are in their fourth year at the Buddhist University of Ivalginsky Datsan. Here is past. Their main goal through studying is to achieve enlightenment, thereby escaping the wheel of existence and to reach Nirvana. Even though the Republic of Buryatia is part of Russia, it is a world of its own. Local traditions differ from those typical of the western parts of Russia. When it comes to religion, the difference is striking. Anton and Anatoly are almost aliens here, where there are no more than ten people like them. Twenty-four-year-old Anatoly came here from two Buddhists, Buddha Lama and Bimba Lama, discovered a miracle buried under the ground. Today it can be found in the major Buddhist temple of Russia, Ivalginsky Datsan. Different people see him in different ways. Some think that he is looking at them. To me it seemed that his eyes were half open. I saw nothing supernatural, no open eyes or anything of the kind. In 95% of cases, it is closed off, but today a Mongolian delegation is arriving. So I think they will open it for them. Few ever get to